Hello, everyone. This is the Nothing Specialty Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Chris. And I'm Ben. So what's new with you this week, Chris? Uh, nothing much. Just uh, been watching things, listening to things, playing things. Uh, recently, so, so I've got a, a Note 9, right? And there's uh, this game called Merge Dragons. Okay. And uh, my wife got me into it. I, it. I wouldn't have sought it out originally, but it's uh, surprisingly engaging. <laughs> Especially uh, pulls on my OCD strings. But uh, so I use the stylus a lot for it because it's that's really good to like pull small objects around the screen, and it's it's a lot better than your your thumb getting in the way and everything. Yeah. So uh, so I, I was playing that, and it was like two in the morning no big deal and <laughs> my phone is suddenly like hey I, i'm at like five percent dude i'm gonna die so I'm, I'm like okay uh i gotta get the cable from over my bedside and and i had just had the, the tiny little stylus for the note nine in my hand and i was holding other things in that hand and like trying to get the cable uh out from like tangled up where it was and troop it just falls right down in the middle of between my the bed and the wall see like we have a small room where we're at and so we can't have it in the middle so i'm against the wall on my side of the bed <laughs> and uh-huh. it just drops right down in there Did and i survive? thought for sure i was uh out a, a stylus because my arm cannot fit in there i tried it was painful oh. and I did, I couldn't even like touch the, the floor. <laughs> so I, I ended up eventually, uh, fastening tape to the end of a stick and, uh, going spear fishing for it. Oh there. my gosh. All, all the while when my wife was asleep next to me, just not, not, uh, luckily I didn't wake her up or we might've had problems because, uh, I'm not supposed to be playing that at three in the morning. Well, two, oh. <laughs> well, four, I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, uh, so this podcast is going to be perfect for ratting yourself out. I know, right? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the little stylus is so good and so great, but then it uh, it's so easy to lose, and that just uh, I was I was fearing for my Note Nine that I might not be able to use the stylus anymore. So that was a that was a scary moment. <laughs> There's one time where I. Left my stylus lying around actually because I have the Note 9 too, and uh, the only and I actually I uh, was like, oh crap, what if I lost this? So I actually ended up looking up like if you could buy just the pen, and you can. Oh, okay, so it wouldn't be yeah, the end of the world, but how expensive? It, it would, I think it was like thirty bucks. I could be wrong. But I, it was like no, it was affordable. Bad. It wasn't like buying a new phone, you know? Yeah, <laughs> and they they don't have to charge too much because it's like just an accessory for the pretty simple yeah Yeah. cool damn well i thought you had a a, an s9 not a note 9 um i have have that in upgrade recently or no i've actually had it for a while um i had the note 8 or i sorry i had the galaxy s8 and like a year and a half ago i switched to the note 9 because i always wanted a stylus for my I, having a notepad on my phone is just good for everything I do because I like taking notes. So oh yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. Like uh, going to school with like math classes, it improved my note taking so much to be able to just draw, you know, write. Because math is is hard to type. <laughs> it's got mm-hmm. a bunch of symbols and crap. So, but you can write it real easy. And so yeah. ha- taking all my notes on that using like the the OneNote uh, app from Microsoft. It, it synced it from my my laptop to my phone, and so I would uh, just write on my phone, and it would show up on my laptop where I could also type. So there it was a it was a pretty pretty good deal. So yeah, but this Note Nine, it's a it's pretty good. It's a it's only flaw is its screen, in my opinion. This, like I hate how fragile these things are. I, I feel like really? there's no way around it. Well, I had a I had one of like the really good phone cases with the phone cover and everything. It wasn't a glass screen mm-hmm. protector, but it was a screen protector and like. No, oh, you got to get the glass. Like a month ago, it just hit the, it was, I dropped it and I was at work and it hit the safe, but Ooh. it hit a penny just right. Just cracked the screen. <laughs> just, oh geez. Like spider webbed horribly. I, I had to get it fixed. 
And yeah, that's just I like ever since I've been using uh, gal- uh, galaxies instead of uh, apples, like that's the one thing I've noticed is like I like the feel of the glass screens, but they're just so fragile. And, I, and like well, e- unless, you have have a, glass unless you have a glass screen protector, huh? Doesn't Apple have the glass too? Yeah, but someone with the exact same brand of phone case I had was like had the uh, the iPhone X, and he tossed it across the room, and he like felt perfectly comfortable doing it. Whereas like I would have freaked out, like, and he just mm. kind of tossed it. So like, I know that it uses a different glass. Like it's, gr- I think the the Galaxies use a Gorilla glass. It's essentially it feels really nice, but its tensile strength is really low, so it mm. buckles under pressure easily. That's why if it hits a flat surface. Your Galaxy phone will probably be fine, but if it hits even a small edge, like a small pebble, it just mm-hmm. it shatters. Hmm. Well, for uh, so my my Note Nine screen is just fine, but I got the glass protector, and uh, from Best Buy, the Armor Edge brand, uh, if you take in a cracked screen protector, they'll replace it for free. Yeah. So for life, uh, and oh, there's okay. no limit on that. So you can just, so I, I didn't have a case for my Note 9, actually. I just had that screen protector on. And uh, about every month, uh, I'd take it in to get a new one because it would shatter and, and get spider webbed and stuff. But the screen underneath was just fine. So, yeah. but now I finally, I have a case on it because I got tired of going to Best Buy and, and getting the new <laughs> screen protector. <laughs> Especially because I know that uh, every time that happens, there's a chance that it could go a little deeper than the protector. And uh, it's just a little scary. <laughs> yeah. So well, I finally, I just because of how long I've had insurance with Verizon, was able to in- like upgrade my insurance for on my phone for free. But um, by the time I realized I could do that, it was too late because the insurance wouldn't take place until the next month. And my screen was broken oh. so bad that like I, I kind of needed to... I, I was going to not yeah. have a phone if I didn't fix it. It was like blinking in and out the screen like it was bad wow yeah Uh, unusable levels of damage (laughs) like essentially i was like i might have 24 hours of this left you know yeah i've seen some people with some pretty ridiculous screens using them like they were just fine uh it's uh, a it's pretty i i don't think i could do it (laughs) yeah I I get a little crack on the protector and I'm just like ah <laughs> like you can't stop staring <laughs> at it and it bugs me every everything I do on it. That's insane. Uh, and you know I recently uh, last time I was at Best Buy I was just wandering around because I had some time to kill and uh, I talked to one of the Apple reps because I was like yeah wh- how what if how far have they come? Like, have they, have they gotten up to the point where I would consider switching? Uh, cause you know, it is just a, uh, it's a prettier user experience. I will give it that. And, and it's more user friendly, definitely. But, uh, so I, I was talking to him and asked him like, so would I be able to do this or that or the other thing? And he was like, well, no, th- that doesn't. It doesn't have that functionality yet. But uh, <laughs> like, what about this? And so one thing I was uh, doing was the split screen apps. So I, I have uh, oh. Samsung has a secure yeah, drive. They, yeah, so you can like, have folder. your uh, YouTube and something else open at the same time, correct? Yeah, like but like, so I would use the secure folder to copy a, an app, namely Pokemon Go. Uh, into the secure folder and then log into Pokemon Go from the secure folder and, as a different account. So I have two accounts logged in at the same time and have both of those split screened. So oh, wow. I have, I, I, I yeah, I, I power game that. <laughs> but uh, so, and I asked him, like, is that the thing that yeah, you can do? Yeah, I know. Do? Like, the most surprising part about all of this is that you're a filthy Pokemon Go player. Well, yeah, they just uh, <laughs> when I have time, whatever. <laughs> when you can't afford, <laughs> go out of my uh, way. when you can't afford the real games, kids. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I might, I might try Sword and Shield at some point, but uh, I don't have the money now. <laughs> Fair enough. I, I've heard good things about it from everyone I've talked to so far. So, yeah, yeah. Um, the fact that there's online stuff it means it's a little glitchier, but like, it's the first time you have an online Pokemon game, so like, it's kind of be to kind of be to, kind of to be expected, you know? Like, yeah. It's an online game. There's going to be some glitches. 
But uh, so what what kind of online component is there? I haven't really looked too there's much. There's actual into it. like w- one of the ways you can actually like make kind of break the game if you really want to try hard is there's actual raids. So like oh. fighting high level things as a group hmm. and uh, stuff like that. And uh, so they kind of got so some can, Pokemon Go influence there. Yeah. So it's got a few interesting things as far as that goes. You can do the whole thing single player though. That's it's not required. Okay. It's just uh, it's an option, and it and but it allows you to kind of power game your or power level your stuff is the most important thing of all of that. Um, also, um, you can encounter pretty much any level of Pokemon, and in, but instead of you know how like in previous games it was like oh you. Uh, you don't have the gym badges to properly control this Pokemon. Well, now it's more like mm. you, uh, now it tells you, Oh, you can't catch this. It's too high level for you. It just tells you like, Oh, oh you're not, you're not a good enough trainer yet, essentially. So wow. you can come across a Pokemon that's, uh, um, until you get a certain amount of badges, you can come across Pokemon that are a higher level, but it won't let you catch them until you've progressed more. So that's one of the other things about it is the areas have different level stuff. And see, I never like ran into that issue in the old games where you, like they they always tell me every gym like, "Oh, now Pokémon the uh up to this level will obey you." I'm like, "Well, I don't have any that are that high yet. I just beat this gym." <laughs> that's like 20 levels away. Oh, <laughs> so really? I don't know if I- I'd ever like I always had that problem where I'd have like that one Pokemon I was actually like I was starting to get higher level than the rest of them, but hmm. I definitely like had my powerhouse like three or four Pokemon that I preferred over the rest. My yeah. biggest issue in a lot of the games was just uh, once you find a Pokemon you want to catch, having to then level that one up to keep using it realistically, which is the yeah. problem that was solved. You don't you aren't facing like the fifth gym leader and coming across level 20 Pokemon that you now have to spend an hour leveling if you want to actually use them in the next gym, you know? Oh, okay. So like you can actually find Pokemon around the same level of your stuff. It's just the whole, the way you're, that keeps you from catching them now is designed to keep you from just like, you know, beginning of the game, start trying to luck your way into having a level 40 Steelix. Mm hmm. That's the point of it. Hmm. Well, you'd have to beat it down, right? Or is it? Does it take some of I mean, Pokemon Go and technically Let's go Pikachu's, in any Pokemon game uh, you could catch stuff? Technically, in any Pokemon game you could catch a, uh, you could have caught Mewtwo with a regular Pokeball at full health. Is the chance like astronomical? Yes, but it's technically oh. doable, and so tech. But uh, that's why I said luck your way into it. So in, instead of having that luck factor, like I'm sure there's still different classifications of Pokeballs, but in particular now it's just like you can't luck your way into catching something that might have been too high for you. But then again, that wasn't a problem with previous ones because they purposely underleveled everything around you. Yeah. To compensate. Well, that was the, kind of the point. Fit. Like so, when you're when you're just running through them and and beating them all, going from place to place, it wasn't a slog. Like you don't have to. Oh, I'm three battles into my Route 16 journey, and I gotta turn back. I can't. Like <laughs> my Pokemon are all dying. Yeah. You know? Um. One other thing too is they still have tall grass, but um, you can actually run away from random encounters because you see it as like an exclamation point or like a question mark or something. Hmm. And if you leave the tall grass and the Pokemon is still following you because it'll chase you, you'll okay. get to see what it is. And if you're oh. not in tall grass, you get to see them in the open. Like I saw a screenshot where it was just a Tyranitar walking around. Oh, jeez. Yeah. So, but if you think that about it, that's pretty actually fun. pretty neat is now you can kind of go, oh, I caught this walking in the wild. So you can kind of purposely go after it instead of, you know trying to randomly encounter something. It also means they're yeah. actually having higher level neater evolved stuff just wandering around at certain points. I'm not sure at what point in the game that was. It would suck if that was like early on. But like late game, that would be a lot nicer than randomly encountering some stuff, you know? Yeah. I know in X and Y when I was on like whatever the the X and Y's version of like the championship road, like I just randomly encountered a Moltres by a waterfall and I was just like, what? Dang. <laughs> and it was pretty cool, but like that's not something that usually happens, you know. Like, I yeah. think another time I actually encountered like a, a Gyarados or something. So it was like one of those things where it's like 
you finally started encountering higher level stuff instead of having to catch it at that garbage level. But it was also so late in the game that it was kind of like, um, yeah, that's it was at a completionist part of the game. There were at that point, if you wanted a Gyarados, you would have a Gyarados. <laughs> <laughs> now I do wonder. I think in in the previous Pokemon games, uh, it was like it, Pokemon that you caught l- at low level and leveled up were more powerful than Pokemon that you caught at a high level. Is that um, still the case, or is that never the case? <laughs> I bl- I'm not sure. I actually asked because there's a. Uh, because one of my friends plays it, and he wasn't sure. Because I was talking to him about how if you like, if you leveled up a Pokemon constantly with rare candies, it would actually have lower stats than one that leveled up normally. Like the game was actually designed to do that. Yeah, essentially, yeah, so rare you wouldn't get the hand catching it high. Yeah, so you do lose on benefit. I, I'm not sure how the stats get affected, but you do lose on benefits depending on how you level them. Mm-hmm. I think um, the daycare also was one of those that. Uh, like the the stat boosts each level are lower or something so in the end you'll mm-hmm. have you know so if you really wanted to be overall. competitive you wouldn't want to use those things but yeah. if you just wanted to beat the game it was viable yeah yeah because then like if you're missing like maybe five percent of your stats because you didn't level them naturally we'll just level them up a couple more times and he's good <laughs> exactly legit like the and you could beat the elite the Elite Four with Pokemon that were like five to six levels under their levels, as long as you just had a good team, you know? Yeah, played to the the super effective and stuff like that. Exactly. So it's like there was in the game there was just you just had to build the right team and just be smart about it. And if you just if you wanted to like one time I did a a run where I played only things with the flying type. And I had to put a little bit more effort into it because I fought an electric gym leader and I like, oh, yeah. kind of like, I have to have a, a moves that aren't flying type on some of you and B, I need to make sure when I hit you, it's one or two hits and you're gone or I'm screwed. Mm-hmm. Here. Yeah, that's interesting. I never actually thought like I, I always saw like gym leaders that focused on one type or the trainers that had all Pokemon of one type as just big freaking idiots. And like, what well, you can't win if all of your guys are the same type. That's not a that's not a good strategy. But then I'm like, well, it actually might be fun to try to play the game that way. Like, say, all well, right, yeah, this yeah, is my grass it is, type. I run. did it, so I had an excuse to play through it with more fun. Like one yeah, that I had a lot a of challenge. fun with, and I had to have. So for the record, though, I also had to have both X and Y and Omega Red or Omega Ruby. Um, to make this work, but I played a playthrough of all fossil types. Oh, that one was really interesting, and I enjoyed it because it was actually mm-hmm. a lot. Or I guess fossil isn't a type, but you get my point. It was all of the fossil yeah fossil Pokemon, Pokemon. and uh, it was really fun. But it was also a lot. Uh, the team was a lot more balanced than you'd think. There were some things I was having issues with. Anything that was good against ground was almost always causing you problems mm-hmm. that being said I, I still had a like my i had enough other because everyone has dual typing their ground and something else so yeah. i had an answer for almost any problem i came across but it also meant like i anytime i faced an electric pokemon i just kind of giggled to myself <laughs> <laughs> so um mm-hmm. it was it's more for fun and obviously when you do those run throughs though you you can't start off with all my stuff is this type. Like, I think it was usually by the third or fourth gym I would finally have. Like, a team yeah. that was just what I wanted. Uh, but I'm also that person, and I know it's going to sound bad. I don't like the starters lately, so I've just been, like, the second I have a replacement for my starter, I, I just kind of put it back in my box. Hmm. I don't release them into the wild. That's interesting. I feel like that's just a bit mean. But uh, Yeah, yeah. Keep it in the box, at least. <laughs> yeah, I keep it in the box. I, I just don't like, A, I don't really, the typings I don't find as amusing as other people. Um, but also, like, they just don't look like Pokemon anymore. They look more like Digimon. And I like Digimon, mm. but when I'm playing a Pokemon game, I will play Pokemon. Yeah, <laughs> I get that. that. That's that's why. It's not even like a, like a oh, like they're, they're low-tier trash. It's like, uh, it's, I, the, I'm not down with how they're looking and functioning. Yeah, you want a different I, I, different kind of aesthetic experience. 
Yeah. Like I, Nothing I, this whole that. Pokemon anthropomorphic thing is not something I'm down with. Other people that are, that's fine. You're weird. It's awesome, but I'm not. Oh, familiar. thanks. <laughs> I stand by my criticism. <laughs> um, oh yeah, the new ponytail looks like a My Little Pony. I went to one of our friends and I told him it was art. His fault. People like him are causing this. <laughs> so first, the you made the anthropomorphic. What do you mean? The new ponytail looks like a My Little Pony. It's also a, it's a psychic, uh, fly or fire type, and it has a horn when it's Rapidash. Rapidash always had a horn. Or sorry, Ponyta still has a horn. Sorry, it looks like a My Little Pony. It, it oh, has okay. a horn, now, <laughs> a small horn. Sorry, but yeah, mm-hmm. it's so. Is that like a lowland types? Like they have types for this one too. Yeah, they did uh, types for like this different, region too. Of- different, like for so you this it's a, it's still a ponyta, but it's a this region's ponyta, like the Alolan exactly. versions. Exactly, which actually that oh, okay. idea I'm actually perfectly cool with. I thought the yeah, idea of Executor cool. becoming a dragon type was very amusing. Yeah, and then like uh, the Alolan Vulpix was all frosty and stuff, and Nine Tails. That was, was probably one of my fire favorite typing. ones. Yeah. Um, I don't remember all the other so. ones. Oh yeah, Raichu I couldn't get behind. Again, it's I get it. It's supposed to be cute and look fun, but I couldn't get like <laughs> I liked Raichu when he just looked like a something a biker keeps around with him, and then it was just like look, it floats <laughs> and it like took away all its sharp edges, so you know it's mm-hmm. no longer threatening. And I'm just like, but I liked the old Raichu. <laughs> yeah, well you can still catch the old Raichus then. <laughs> Yeah, I just can't play that. But I didn't like the hand holding in the Aloha version, anyways. Aloha but, uh, version, <laughs> whatever it's called, the Hawaiian <laughs> Pokemon version. It was very big on the hand holding. I couldn't get behind it. It was just like an NPC needed to stop me and talk to me every ten seconds, and it just it ruined it for me. I yeah. and I'm sure if I'd stuck with it, there would have been less of it eventually. But it was enough to like put me off of it. It was a bit too much. Mm-hmm. Especially since, like, I don't get a lot of time on video games. Like, the two hours I spent on Diablo today is the first two hours in, like, a week I've played a video game. So when yeah, I play a sucks. game, if I'm not, like, fully engaged, it's it's just, like, one of those things where it's, like, it's not worth it for me, you know? Yeah. But, yeah. Well, anyways, speaking of time management, uh, <laughs> let's move on to, to a, a topic here. Yeah. Well, we got a silly topic for us. Yeah, so uh, the one for today is going to be um, Rick and Morty. Do you have to have an I- high IQ, or do you have to be super smart or just well, um, well educated to en- really enjoy and appreciate it? Mm. So this is the the kind of exclusionary uh, sentiment that the Rick and Morty fans sometimes have is like, if you don't if you don't like Rick and Morty, you just don't have a high enough IQ. Like you don't you don't get it. <laughs> uh, uh, well, uh, have you seen the the new uh, any from anything from season four yet? No, I really need to. I was gonna. I don't think it's on Hulu yet, and that's usually how I get it. Yeah, well, I was just looking up. I, I watched the first episode. Uh, they have the first three on Adult Swim right now, uh, and you can just stream that from a from a you know, web page. You don't like have on a to computer have a, or something. Ca- account anymore to do that because I remember that was a problem for us in the past. Yeah, no, it's a uh, they they took that off at least for the beginning. Probably they're probably gonna oh, put okay. it back on after the but first for few now. episodes. Yeah, oh, they, okay, they want to build some more hype, so they're letting the first few out. So, okay. So but, uh, yeah, eventually it'll be on sense. Hulu when it, probably when it's done. But yeah, but I've usually been pretty patient when it comes to my media. So, uh, but yeah, I haven't seen the new ones, but I've seen obviously all the previous seasons. Yeah. Okay. So, like, seeing from all that I've seen, and including the this new uh, season four episode one. Like, there's nothing in it that you really have to be that smart to understand. It's just, like, it's got a unique sense of humor. And I think that sense of humor is shared with, or by, uh, like, people who fancy themselves as intellectuals. If that makes sense. No, I get you completely. 
So, I mean, obviously, I'm not going to call all Rick and Morty fans stupid, but I can say, per- like, from personal anecdotal experience, I know at least six people who I do not consider to be geniuses and do not consider themselves to be geniuses, and they like the show. Mm-hmm. So, there's definitely nothing saying that, you know, only intelligent people can like this, because... Of those people I'm referring to, I'm pretty sure all of them are stoners. Like, <laughs> well, I'm and, gonna I'm gonna play devil's advocate though, and and uh, put out the notion that maybe or the possibility that they they could like what they see, but people who are actually smart and have a high IQ could be getting so much more out of it than them because of their increased intelligence. Like there's so much more underneath the surface that they are getting from it and are appreciating that the, you know, your stoner friends are just seeing the, the funny jokes on the surface and they're not getting the meta aspect of it. Except I don't think it's as like, it definitely does a lot of like, like it quotes real life and science fiction, obviously, but like from an honest perspective, it, it, the science it quotes is, at the end of the day, mostly just gibberish. Like, that, that is reality. Yeah. And, and, it, it, and like, Rick actually makes fun of that on multiple occasions. Like, he know, like, like the writers are aware that 99.9% of, of the scientific things that come out of their mouth are absolute gibberish. Yeah. It's just kind of so, filler words and, and sciencey words that uh, give it like they're their plot relevance words. They're they're words to be there to say like, oh, why is this possible? Well, it's because of this, this, and this. You idiot. Yeah. You know, like that kind of a thing. And of course, those words don't actually mean anything. But in ter- in the, they've given them context. They've given the meaning in the the context of the show, so that they now have a meaning whether it was actually scientific or not. And a lot of the words maybe come from science too, but yeah, I, I don't think the vocabulary is what they're talking about when they say you need to be smart to, to be able to really appreciate Rick and Morty. I think in, instead of like vo- vocabulary and uh, sciencey words and concepts that they reference, it's more of like a narrative smart uh, and like, because it, there's a lot of meta stuff in there and I don't know. Do you do you see that? Like, it's not as much the the science words and concepts that you have to know and be smart about. It's the like understanding uh, characters' motivations and their uh, like internal dialogue and their facial expressions and stuff, and the just the the meta aspect of you know how they call out you know. Oh, this is the this season three, or like you know this is oh a hundred years Rick and Morty like and the, the, at the end of, of season one or season two or something is like, and that's the season, <laughs> you know, like yeah. they, they, they say meta stuff sometimes. And while that's like pretty surface level, uh, there's deeper meta stuff as well that you really have to pay attention to, to, to get. And I don't think that the, like the stoner friends that you're referring to are getting that deeper aspect of it. So I, I mean, I know for a fact, some of them are, cause I've talked with them about it on multiple occasions and, they they understand the show just as well as anyone else I've talked to, and I'm not saying I'm Stephen Hawking, but I don't think I'm stupid. And I get a lot of mm-hmm. like the meta stuff that goes on in the show, and um, I don't know. Like, I guess also like we're you're saying like the people who so I should say it like this: people who think that you have to be smarter than average to enjoy Rick and Morty. That's what I disagree with. But mm-hmm. keep in mind, your average person today in America, that stupid kid who can't pass high school, is still probably has a higher IQ and has more knowledge or definitely has a higher IQ and has more knowledge than your average person two to three hundred years ago. Well, yeah. So you, and the- so picking up on things in my like picking up on things that are intended to be thrown at you, I think that that is not something I would necessarily applaud. It's it would be poor entertainment if it was unable to properly um, portray the thing it is trying to portray. 
Like my best mm-hmm. example would actually be uh I, I I enjoyed the movie Prometheus, I know, shocker. I'm a horrible human being for enjoying that. I'm what's wrong with the movie going culture. <laughs> that being said, I think it's a bad movie. But not because of all the reasons other everyone else says. Because everyone else says it makes no sense. But if you sit there and think about it, it makes sense. But the words I just used are the problem there. People don't like to sit there and think about their media. Yeah. A, a proper story is going to explain things to you without you having to sit there and think about it. So saying so but uh um so I think that's ultimately what it comes down to is it could just be that I think Rick and Morty is just very good at delivering its message properly. Yeah. You know? Like I I actually want to give credit to the writers. I don't want to give credit to the audience. Cuz yeah, in fact, I've encountered I, I would we're, go... we're talking about the same audience that jumps onto a counter at Whack Donald's and yells out I'm Pickle Rick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think given that uh, example, I would go even a step further and say that maybe the people who think that the show is deep and and requires so much more thought just are on the in and of themselves less intelligent than than other viewers. So the ones that are insisting, oh, you have to be smarter to get it, it took them more thought to get it. So that would suggest <laughs> that since they thought, oh, it's it takes so much thought to to actually understand it, they're they're not as smart as the people like you who just get it and don't have to comb through every second of it to get every detail. Like yeah, you know, we just we saw it and it happened and we got it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we understood the motivations of the characters. We didn't need an hour long analysis of of the one twenty minute episode. You know the so it's the but yeah you know, because it took them so much effort to understand what what other people understand at a surface level, they then see other people that maybe don't understand that or didn't take the time to analyze it or or articulate it the same way they understand it, and they say, "Oh, I didn't like it." And then they then come to its defense and say, well, it, it took so much effort. You really have to be smart in order to understand and appreciate Rick and Morty. Like, that's why you don't like it. You don't like it because it's not a bad, because it's a bad show. You, you don't like it because you're dumb, you know? So it feels better on them because then it's, it's the, the viewer's fault that they didn't like it. It's not Rick and Morty's fault that they didn't like it, but really it's neither fault. It's just an opinion. <laughs> like they didn't enjoy it. So yeah, like they, it doesn't, there doesn't have to be an explanation of, well, the show's actually bad or, well, they're actually dumb. They can just simply not enjoy a thing. And like, you know, not everyone is going to like Rick and Morty. A lot of people do, but not everyone has to. It's not, uh, it's not an objective fact that Rick and Morty is good. It's a, it's a subjective, like it depends on the person, how much they like it or whether they even like it. Uh, I'm sure that many people don't like it, uh, especially because of its crass humor and, and swear words here and there and sexual innuendos all over the place. And, you know, the the people who are more religious, in fact, would probably take umbrage to a lot of that stuff. So it's just, it depends on what your values are as a person, what you value in your entertainment. And, you know, it, it doesn't matter your IQ because, because clearly some people that are really dumb do enjoy it. <laughs> so of course, you know, that, obviously that's not a limiting factor for enjoyment of it. Yeah. I agree. So that's what that. I think on that. <laughs> I, I, could, I could understand that being possibly what it is too. Mm-hmm. I think I think I think what it ultimately comes down to is a lot of people like to I don't I don't know why but people nowadays need to villainize the people who don't agree with them. That's like the kind of culture oh, yeah. like nowadays. I, I think that's what it is. Um so the people who suddenly don't enjoy it it's like, "Oh, you don't like what I like? Well, it's cuz you you must be dumber than me." That's the only explanation. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, kind of like uh so they they take that dislike of their, their, you know, they, they call it like, you know, their show, their, the thing that they're a fan of, they take someone else dislike. disliking that as disliking them. Like it's, it's a transitive kind of 
property almost where it's like oh you don't like the show that i've you know devoted so much of my thought and and passion toward then you must hate me so there's something wrong with you <laughs> you're a bad person for not liking rick and morty you know and it's like whoa 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 you kind of jumped a few steps there <laughs> where do we get to this like judging character kind of a, a place they just don't like yeah. the show <laughs> it's not that big a deal yeah agreed that's people just people get so attached to their media nowadays that they identify with it so when you dislike their media they take it as oh you dislike me but yeah I identify with it that's a that's a good uh kind of way to to phrase that because it really is like it's part of their identity to be a Rick and Morty fan and yeah. if you don't like Rick and Morty then that's almost kind of like telling them you're wasting your life being a Rick and Morty fan or just saying that you're, or saying I dislike that part of you. Yeah. Doesn't even have to be you're wasting your life. I've never thought someone wasted their life just because they like a movie that I don't like. Or a series? Um, or a series I don't like. I mean. Are you sure about I that? Pers- <laughs> I get along you, great. You haven't just I get along great. I get, I get oh no, oh no. I get along great with bronies <laughs> despite the fact that I dislike the show. I, I have never thought less of you. When I say things like you're responsible for this, I mean it in a joking way. But that is a fair mm-hmm. point. But if, you know, they choose to take my jokes poorly, then they really shouldn't be around <laughs> me because my sense of humor would ruin that friendship even if they weren't a brony. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I, I mean, two of my closest friends are bronies. That should be proof that I don't just alienate you for liking the show. Yeah, that's true. I, I, I do sometimes feel like I, I get a little bit of a, a condescension and like, uh, you know, like thinking less of me because I like it, you know? <laughs> oh, I don't think less of you for liking it. I think less of you for comparing it to the Cimmerillion. <laughs> <laughs> now, when did I do that? <laughs> I don't remember that. Good. Can we both forget it, please? <laughs> please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that part where uh, where the Dragon Ball Z episode happened. Yeah, I think I remember that in a similarly. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I think I think what it ultimately comes down to is people want to be pretentious about things nowadays. Yeah. That's that's ultimately what it is. Um, they want to have some sort of social cred that they can hold over the other people in their group. They want to be able to say, "Oh, I get Rick and Morty. I'm smarter." You know, and, and now and everything nowadays, yeah. like as far as like especially with younger people goes. And I'm sure it was sim- somewhat similar when I was younger, and I just didn't notice because I was a part of that generation. But like, I in my where I work, Whack Donalds, I get to hear a bunch of younger people talk. Like I've heard multiple generations worth of new phrases from Gucci to lit, and uh, mm-hmm. I don't understand it. But the thing <laughs> I've noticed too is that these same people I hear saying these different phrases over time whereas i've never changed like that i say the same thing i said when i was in high school i could say bra and bro (laughs) (laughs) and if i do say gucci i mean it very ironically and they know i and i purposely say it to the people who know i'm saying it like that isn't gucci a brand i don't like apparently it means good now you see see how old we are what but anyway <laughs> the, the thing i've noticed is yeah, i just okay though, boomer these, to myself the same person exactly <laughs> <laughs> the thing i've noticed is that while i kind of stick with what i grew up with uh younger people are much more adaptable to catching the new uh new th- new thing to say or the new hmm. the new thing that's popular and quickly more adapting. impressionable yeah they're just more impressionable so Rick and Morty is an impressible, impressionable show. And so it's just naturally something they attach to because it's the fun, like thing to talk about and just be a part of. So I, I yeah. think I, I would say that's, that's a good portion of it too. So, but yeah, you know, I think a similar thing happened with Game of Thrones. Because it was so ubiquitous and so many people watched it, 
it it kind of became a, a cultural thing. Like if you weren't watching it, then you were missing out. Yeah, you know, when the when the coworkers would gather around the water cooler, they'd be talking about uh, Daenerys and and what she's gonna do about the Cersei, and and you were you're just like who, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so oh you, there's you zombies in this one. Huh. Of thing. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's like by not watching it, you kind of felt like you missed out on on a a culture like on a cultural like happening. And I th- I feel like uh, Rick and Morty is uh, similar in that way. If you aren't watching it, then you're not part of the this phenomenon like when when people go to whack donald's and uh scream for szechuan sauce like you won't understand what they're talking about if you didn't watch it yeah so that kind of puts you outside of that circle and and makes you alienated Uh, or if you know what they're talking about but hate it yeah then it's like well they that once again feels like an attack on them not not the show so it's yeah. just yeah it's a vicious cycle of of identifying yourself with media and and letting that media run your life because yeah. if they're not careful it's going to start ruining it not running it also uh so in the uh in the evolutionary psychology uh, course I've been taking um something I've learned that's interesting is that people nowadays like writers are very good at finding subconscious messages that can pertain to a certain generation or the masses Mm. and rick and morty feels fills that base urge nowadays that has become a a common thing which is it, it feels new and fresh every episode it doesn't feel like the same show every episode i would say Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's perfect for the culture that popularized Vine and Snapchat. Because um, mm-hmm. all of the, the things I just described are things that are momentary and then you move on to the next new thing. Meme culture, that kind of thing. Rick and Morty fits perfectly in Yeah, that. It's a lot of non sequitur. So I would even argue that it, feel, it fills a base need in people's need, media nowadays. And you don't have to be someone who's into memes or Snapchat to appreciate that because how like episode of the week shows get stale. They really Mm -hmm. do. Also it, uh, and the creators have been pretty blunt about this. It kind of blindly ignores the concept of, you know, following up on its own stories. It kind of just moves on as if usually it moves on as though they don't happen. And one could, I haven't seen the new season yet, but, like evil Morty came back and they literally as like a big, they, they bring him back at the end of an episode that literally had nothing to do with the Rick and Morty that we're usually watching adventures on. (laughs) Yeah. Like on purpose, just to be like, here, here's how little he has to do with our current, with your current Rick and Morty guys. We can do a whole episode Mm -hmm. that doesn't even have them in it. (laughs) And that's the point is to get that kind of response and yeah to get that feeling i think that it has that where it's like you know you could watch any episode and be fine and, and understand what's going on and not be left out but if you watch them in order you see the status quo change and progress uh from season to season and sometimes from episode to episode like there's a whole time when the the mom and dad was was split up and and then they're together and then they go the, it matters yeah. what goes on it's not just like random uh, agreed so that, it's not I'm not saying I'm not it. saying they ignore story structure entirely I'm saying that mm-hmm. it's it feels like a new show every week it, it doesn't feel like you're watching the most recent episode of I don't know let's I'm trying to think of a show that isn't dated. <laughs> uh, I don't I've been know. Watching first a lot one of friends th- recently. Does that go into what you're I, I trying think, to say? Well, I think uh, friends, I could, yeah, friends, I think season to season has some pretty good changes, but like episode to episode, it kind of lingers. Mm-hmm. But like, yeah, it's like, you know, 
I would use friends as an, I could use friends as an example where the status quo doesn't change too much. Whereas in Rick and Morty, they literally abandon a unit, one of their universes by like season three or sorry, episode mm-hmm. three. <laughs> and then refer to that multiple times in the future that, you know, it makes a difference. Agreed. But referencing the referencing past events and using it to build yourself are different from having attachment to the yeah the, it's not the like a, an adventure story yeah like it's not like a, a serialized lord of the rings adventure where it's a a big long quest and they progress a little farther each time uh it, it's it is or you're hoping that rachel uh, and uh, episodic someone get together like exactly uh-huh. it's there <laughs> there there isn't really a goal in fact to just to press how little of a goal there is the goal of rick became to get the szechuan sauce back Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it, which is its own meta joke saying this is how little goals matter yeah but yeah so i, I mean episode I've, to episode it's gonna just be whatever the writers can think of to to happen that that week like and it's gonna be unique and cool because they've proven themselves as capable of of coming up with those kind of concepts and uh running them through the gambit so I don't know. I, th- I like Rick and Morty, and I don't think that being exclusionary about it, like some fans are, is a good thing. I think keeping it open and and inviting to people, as it just is, like keeping the fan base open and inviting, would would be a benefit to it. But unfortunately, I don't know if that's possible. I mean, I think that if uh, Rick and Morty was like if Rick was an actual person, he would call those people a tool for trying to make a show of oh, yeah. like, seem exclusionary like that that's ultimately what it comes down to is the people the the show they want to emulate and care about so much the people in that show would condemn their behavior yeah. and how they're acting <laughs> as being a bunch of tool bags <laughs> like that's how i look at it i'm gonna look at it is just like that you know you mm-hmm. you're, you're making a big deal of nothing yeah at other people not enjoying your media isn't the end of the world. Mm-hmm. So that was the silly topic, <laughs> although it, it, that may have been uh, confusing because that <laughs> got pretty deep and uh, and serious there. <laughs> We're bad at this whole being silly thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so for our for our serious topic is actually going to be an interesting one too. Um, it's free speech versus freedom from consequence. So, like, Mm -hmm. just go in depth with what we're looking at here is. um, I don't think anyone on the show is going to argue against freedom of speech. However, should freedom of speech protect you from the consequences of your speech? Mm -hmm. Essentially, what is the line? Like, we all kind of universally agree that yelling fire in a crowded airport or movie theater is should be frowned upon. Mm Mm-hmm. But but should it be illegal? Um, and uh, we can re- we can reference. Uh, so this is more philosophical than like factual. So for mm-hmm. instance, there is a Supreme Court ruling saying that no, you can't if your freedom of speech puts other people in danger or um, causes un- unnecessary stress or problems for a person, it no longer is a protected right, such as yelling mm-hmm. fire in a crowded movie theater, because you have now caused, um, you, you have infringed on other people's lives with your freedom of speech. Yeah, it's like the, the saying, your freedom to wave, or your right to wave your hands around ends at my face. You, yes. as soon as you are causing a problem for someone else, there should be someone to step in. Uh, and exactly. some people would say the government, uh, others might just say private organizations, but I'm not that libertarian. <laughs> I think the government does play a very, uh, integral role in keeping us safe. That's part of the, you know, we, we compromise some of our freedoms for the safety. We can like, we, we, we give in that. Yes. We are not free to yell fire in a crowded theater, but we're okay about that because if someone yells that and there's no fire, they have then caused, you know, they've, they've infringed on your safety and that's, you know, you don't want to be in the middle of a stampede because some 
jerk just decided he's going to have some fun that day. You know, that's the, because some guy wants to laugh at the chaos. Yeah. Yeah. So, but then this, this whole freedom from consequences thing, we need to lay down some definitions or else we're going to be off in the semantic weeds immediately. So So let me consequences uh, from whom consequences from both society and let's say not the like so when i when i hear the whole um freedom of speech is not freedom from consequence i immediately disassociate it with our government because the government it's they've pretty much said like they they have a long the Supreme Court has a long history of supporting assholes Mm -hmm. with their freedom of speech but those assholes still might face societal or maybe even like workplace consequences such as losing a job because they said something stupid or losing a contract with a possible contractee, something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, so that, that's, that's the kind of thing we're talking about. Should a, is, is it, is it okay in our opinion for a workplace to fire you for something you've said. It depends on the contract that you signed with them. Is that what they have a clause? If they have a clause in the contract that says, you know, like a morality clause. Yeah. So if they've got a clause in the contract that you signed that, you know, that has like, well, if you make us look bad, then we can fire you. Then yeah, they can for any reason. Even if what you said in the court of public opinion is liked, that company can still say, no, nah, we didn't like it, so you're fired. You know, that's, it, it's something that private businesses can do in their, own, in their own likeness, in their own way. Now, if they, that should not be a, a required part of a contract, required by the, by, you know, the law or anything, by the government the government should not step in and and say this is the way things should be so we're going to require all employee contracts to have this clause in them that says they can fire you for saying something bad because then that's just that's just uh taking away your free speech like the government taking Through away your third free speech party. with one extra step yeah yeah so it's <laughs> it, it's like slavery and then extra steps exactly <laughs> <laughs> so but uh the same can kind of go for the pu- the court of public opinion uh if so th- there's there's something that's gone on a lot the the job lynch mob is what some people call it but others may think that that's uh offensive because lynching has a a racial past <laughs> especially in our country so but the the essentially the the job lynch mob is when someone does something that offends a group of people that group then calls their employer or calls their their uh uh supporters like the like if they're being supported by ads or sponsors they call whoever wherever the money's coming from for that uh-huh. person's job and and make complaint after complaint after complaint there there could be just maybe a hundred people but they're responsible for thousands. There could be just things. maybe a hundred people in this group, but that small minority voice, if it gets loud enough, can get that company or that uh, sponsor to do whatever they want, including taking their funding away from that person that, they, that, that said the thing that they didn't like. And gotcha. that, I think, is unjustified and should not be allowed with our government that should be prevented by the government that's that should be illegal to do because gotcha. that is free speech what they said and there was consequences that are basically like people from like what's to say that those hundred people that complained aren't activists in politics or people who are actually involved in the government they could be using that in order to stamp down free speech and then once again that's the government or politics or politicians taking away your free speech your freedom to exercise any opinion including dissenting opinion from the popular 
political opinions by forcing your hand in other ways than law. And that should also be not allowed and protected by the First Amendment. Okay. Um, so, I don't know if I'm playing devil's advocate here, but just from... A, so, I think that it's important that things like the First Amendment purposely be vague. And I, I could see other problems arising from suddenly, you know... So, I guess my thing would be, and I know this is going to sound weird, but the First Amendment also protects things like protesting and stuff. Mm-hmm. What I'm he- the thing I'm hearing you bring up, I feel like could be used to try and hurt protesting. I, I think that is ironically to protect the- your solution to protect other people's First Amendment rights would affect the First Amendment rights of other people. But see, the they have the right to speak out against them, but th- it should not extend to them harming his livelihood. That's that's the part where their rights smack right in his face and should be Agreed. prevented. I, but I, I personally think, like, you know, we're never going to get any sponsors because of the shit that's about to come out of my mouth, but uh, um, <laughs> I think that companies need to stop being a bunch of pussies, ultimately. Yeah. Like, that's, that's, that's I, I don't think it's the government's job to step in. I think the government's job should be to stand by and let the country do what it thinks is right as far as that stuff goes. I think companies need to stop bending over for the, like, we've, we've reached a point where we should all be aware that the, like, you know, I'm going to use Disney as an example. And a lot of people are going to hate this example because of the one I'm going to use. But we know for a fact now that the silent, uh, a small minority throwing a huge hissy fit can affect quite a bit and look a lot louder than they actually are. Mm hmm. And it's because of some a bunch of fans purposely going out of their way to hate on just Disney movies. Like we as a, and Disney called it out like, hey, you know, this is a small like this is I don't think it's as small as Disney was downplaying it, but it definitely wasn't as big as it looked. This was like yeah. you said, a couple hundred. I'm not even going to call it a couple hundred, but this was the complaints about the movies were far more than the amount of people actually making the complaints. Yeah. So at this point, it's just, it's willful ignorance for companies to just be like, Oh, look how many people are upset. It's like, no, there's a bunch of random messages you're getting from unverifiable sources. And we all know, like, again, a bun- anyone could figure out, or anyone willing to look at it could figure out like, Hey, one person with a, a bot program could, you know, look like an army of angry people. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you know, so, I think you've actually, yeah, asking for the government to step in and prevent job lynch mobs is not a good idea. It should be a cultural shift. And I think that at the, at the head of that cultural shift has to be, a rejection of this meme that is freedom from freedom of speech doesn't mean freedom from consequences because it it has to to an extent like it's it's a, a freedom from the consequences of like losing your job the, it's a freedom from consequences of just like being completely and utterly destroyed for expressing a, a viewpoint you know, the, the viewpoint can be hammered and, and competed with on the stage of public discourse, and that's fine. But when it crosses the line to damaging that person, that should be discouraged. So the consequence is being called, you know, the, the consequence that they're not free from is being called an idiot online. The consequence that they should be free from is losing their job because of that. And I think the way to accomplish that freedom from that consequence would be through culture, through, like you said, companies pulling their head out of their ass and realizing that this is essentially a scare attack. Okay. A few hundred people could just be like 10 people and it could just be a, uh, you know, political activism at work to shut down this person's free speech. So, you know, they, they have to realize how important free speech is and they have to uh, stop firing people for 
because of complaints from I, I don't care how many people because you can set out an infinite amount of bots you know it, it's public opinion should not make or break careers in that sense Be especially if those people are not the customers people's careers should be made or break or broken on boycotts or uh if the person's you know stuff just isn't that good like so if people hate something they said they stop watching the show the the advertisers realize oh it's no longer you know uh it's no longer makes money sense to advertise on this show because we're not getting that many viewers so we're going to stop advertising on it that that is a natural way for the same thing to happen and that is okay the unnatural way to do it is to bully those companies and and for the companies to be bullied to let themselves be bullied like that agreed so it's kind of it's I, a I, I complicated think, it's complicated <laughs> like i think just if we look at like obviously we have different people we think are good or bad because we're different people but yeah. if you just look at the amount of people who still have jobs or careers and you think about what they've said and done clearly public opinion does like it's pretty clear that we can ignore quite a bit at a certain point people are ignoring stuff and it's who you know and how important you are that is affecting how well these lynch mobs get along yeah i mean let's like let's use bill cosby as an example a lot of people really thought he was innocent for the longest time i personally when i first heard about it was like nah it's a bill cosby like, mm -hmm. I didn't even think, like, I know some people were, like, saying things like, oh, they're just trying to garnish his legacy. And I was just like, huh. This seems weird. <laughs> it's Bill Cosby. Like, that was mm -hmm. my actual response. But then when I thought about it and everything, I was like, oh, okay. And then I thought, like, everyone online would have thought about it and looked at it and been like, oh, yeah, he's totally done something wrong. But I found out, like, there was a lot of division. Like, yeah, threw me off. The, the, <laughs> that di the division is also there for like Michael Jackson. Even there are some people that still you know believe wholeheartedly that he did not do what he was accused of. Like he may have been weird and and had kids in his room, but he didn't do what he was accused of. And there's a lot of not uh, conspiracy theory level like actual uh, evidence for that theory. It is still just a theory. Who knows? There's no way to know what actually happened in that room however many years ago, but there's at least uh, enough information there to call it into question so that people aren't just like dogmatically, oh yeah, Michael Jackson, total pedophile. You know, like yeah. maybe there was a little more to that story. Um, and maybe the, the kids were coached a little on what to say because the parents wanted money. You know, maybe, and and not in a, not in a conspiracy theory kind of way, but in a like people are greedy kind of way <laughs> yeah and i i i don't remember what i i think it was the game grumps or something that were uh talking about it and uh aaron was firmly oh no no it wasn't game grumps they did mention it but i don't think they uh i think danny might have said that he didn't think he was uh he didn't think he was guilty of it but but i don't remember uh the, what i did listen to recently was the dick show uh dick masterson was saying that uh, the more and more he looked into it, the more and more ridiculous all of that stuff s seemed. Uh, and and he, he named off quite a few things that, that made me go like, oh, I, that sounds interesting. I might have to look into that, but I still haven't yet. <laughs> so I can't speak on any, with any authority on it. But yeah, there was at now. least enough there. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> but there's there's at least enough there to call it into question. So to think like the, the p court of public opinion could almost unanimously condemn Michael Jackson when, you know, the evidence was not in and who knows what actually happened. It's still, there's enough there to call it into question still yet. The court of public opinion was so fast to pull that trigger and say, Oh no. Yeah. Yeah. We saw it. Like we, you can see it. He's, he's definitely a pedophile, you know, like it just seems I, I just don't like the court of public opinion yeah. and I don't think that it should be used as a metric to uh, judge people and condemn them and cause harm to them because the court of public opinion can cause a gigantic consequence for someone's free speech 
that sh- that's protected by the government and there's there no there can be no law made to infringe on that free speech but here the court of public opinion is circumventing that because America's full of a bunch of sheep on social media that just follow the big uh, memes and trends and just it's very very frustrating to watch <laughs> And instead of thinking critically and mm-hmm. maybe looking up what they're being told, just like blurt out some like the not even blurt out what a news article said, blurt out what a news yeah. article after blurt out the conclusion, <laughs> not including any of the facts. Oh, I just had a scare. My screen had turned off yeah, and I was afraid it stopped uh, recording, but it's still going. <laughs> Whew. <laughs> Anyways, uh <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah what, 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 do you have any closing or yeah, you, you no, still I, going I, strong <laughs> I mean I was just gonna say I, I think I don't think freedom I think freedom of consequence trying to make it free I think the only way society and like culture can shift is if there is a consequence to your um, freedom of speech how you use it but it has to go both ways so, like, I don't want the consequences to go away, but I would like it if people were more thoughtful on how they were enacting said consequences. Um, I do think that people shouldn't just listen to a small group of people. Um, I know at my work, uh, the if you ask most of the people I work with, they like me, but there's also those, bl- those select few who make it sound like I'm the most mm-hmm. hated person there. And that's so it's like just from an anecdotal or just from a like a personal point of view, I can see how that affects things. And I'm sure we've all been in that situation where it's like, you know, oh, most of these people are cool with me. But this one person talks Mm -hmm. a lot of hot shit about me and uh, they make it sound like I'm a lot less liked than I actually am. Yeah. So I guess like but but Um, that smack talking in the in the background, like that's that's a fine consequence. If that smack talking turned into accusations and uh, you know of like sexual assault or something and got you fired because the person just really didn't like you, that is crossing a line, yes. isn't it? Agreed, because that should agreed because that shouldn't reach that point unless there was actual evidence of it. But if the court of public opinion it, does not need evidence. Supported. That's why it's so infuriating. Yeah, I agree. The port, I agree. It shouldn't reach a, a agreed. It shouldn't reach the public, in my opinion. But There's it's no going way to stop to it. Nowadays. And I understand that's why it's infuriating. And I honestly agreed. I, and that's the problem. Is I don't think there is a way to stop it. People are just too quick. This, this is where yeah. people need to become better. But good luck. And if the government <laughs> tries to enforce people becoming better, that's just, I think that's a bad idea. Oh, so I then, agree is with that, you there. Is that it then? Like, we just, uh, well, we lost that part of our <laughs> free speech because, well, it, people just suck. You know, like, is that all we can do? I, I don't want the government to step in. I'm, I'm pretty I libertarian, think, but there are times when if rights are being infringed upon, a consequence for, like, losing your job as a result of saying an opinion on social media like that's that's too much of a consequence that can be used to incite tyranny from either side i don't i don't feel like it happens like i feel like that's also one of those the minority sounds a lot louder than it it, it sounds a lot bigger than it is i don't think that many people are actually losing their jobs well even even in the like hollywood liberal arena like uh what was it kevin hart was was gonna host some sort of award ceremony but like someone came out about like a decade ago something or no, yeah they found a tweet from like so long ago a or old, not a tweet a but, like, really a joke old, used in yeah. one of his comments yeah and, and it really was like well this is inappropriate and like what do you think it was yeah, a tweet it's 10 and years it was old you think it's gonna be appropriate <laughs> things have changed and, and but because that yeah. existed <laughs> in his past the the people who were the the award ceremony is like well you can't host it anymore sorry the the court of public opinion hates you now so we can't be seen with you you know and it's just like oh, that that kind of stuff is so so dumb I don't like that it happens you see I don't even think that was the court of public opinion I think that was just the uh, 
the Hollywood, the group of Hollywood people who need yeah. to seem. It's it's a it's a form of virtue signaling, even just like speaking to, to for everyone speak else. Speak out against it. Yeah, it, I think it was the people in charge of the award ceremony. I think it was the people in charge of the award ceremony just being like, "Oh well, we're not gonna, we're not, we're so hot, we're." We just don't want to deal with this, so it's easier just to fire him and find someone else. Ironically, yeah, I think they didn't that's the year where else. no one hosted it. <laughs> so mm-hmm. they just kind of screwed themselves up. But, I mean, to be fair, like let's think of some of the most popular movies of all time. Lord of the Rings, Return of the King, The Dark Knight. Uh, the Dark Knight, movies like that. This same group of people who decided on these, uh, whether or not Kevin Hart should be allowed to be a part of the award ceremony. Yeah, they gave, um, they gave, uh, like, awards instead of to these movies they gave major academy awards to movies like i forget the name of it but like the one for i think it's the year of return of the king was just about an old man traveling across the country with his cat (laughs) with his cat and like suddenly and like another yeah and it was because the and like no one saw it and it didn't make a lot of money it checked all the boxes (laughs) yeah so like to, like these people aren't in touch with the public to begin with. Like I think the I think the problem is we give power to scandals like that when we act yeah. like we care. But but if if someone if is prominent in social media and th- that kind of scandal happens, if they don't throw in their two cents on the right side of the issue, then they're called out and looked at as like doing something bad. It, like a part of the problem. And so they have to, they have to throw in in order to stay relevant and stay on the good graces of those people who are dangerous and could get them fired. It's just uh, the whole arena. Actually, a lot of the is, most well-liked, uh, mm. a lot of the most well-liked entertainers are actually very quiet. I like, have a very quiet presence. Uh, Tom Hanks is like notoriously quiet on a lot of subjects. And one example is, is uh, Taylor Swift was being very quiet on politics and people just kept calling her out until she finally said something. And of course it's right along with everyone else in Hollywood. Cause she doesn't want to get kicked out. So who knows if that's her actual opinion, she was forced to say it. She was put against a wall. So, <laughs> you know, it's just, yeah. it's so annoying that they do that. Cause unless your brand is, unless you're, entertainment brand is talking about something that might be less popular such as being a comedian or being a talk Mm -hmm. show host or something they like not having those ticket sales for your song because someone didn't like your personal opinions on something agree that's that's become a definite thing i i can't argue with that i know one of the biggest issues i've had with some of my friends and stuff is i i'm interested in something or i find a particular person or particular media enjoyable and they just outright dismiss it simply because someone as who is associated with it does not share their opinion on like politics or something mm-hmm. and to me it's like i you should be able to disassociate i was so that. annoyed when people were boycotting uh yeah when people were boycotting the ender's game movie because i was so excited that that book like i'm a, I'm a huge orson scott card fan and all of his books like i've read all the whole ender's game and the the trilogy after the whole shadow series even the the two trilogies well he's halfway through the second one but like the prequels to ender's game about the the formic wars beforehand like i just love the whole series and you know it finally got a movie and everyone hates on it because orson scott card's personal opinions are offensive to to them and it's like his opinions aren't in the movie like, if his movie was about misogyny, then sure, boycott it. But it's not. <laughs> That's just him. You know? And so it's yeah. like, uh, it's just uh, really annoying. And because of that social backlash and boycotting of that awesome, like, critically acclaimed sci-fi work that's just, that is amazing and, and all around lauded as one of the best, like, uh, young adult sci-fi novels and series is like the movie that came from it didn't do well because people looked at, at Oris and Scott Card's own views and, and decided based on those alone to boycott Ender's game, even though he didn't even work on the movie, it was just, uh, he just sold the book rights for it. And they probably would have done more movies on his uh, works if it had done better. And so it's just so frustrating. 
<sighs> yeah. No, I I can I can totally agree with that. That there's just no way to be there's no way to prevent that it just except sucks all for around. cultural the uh, movements. And and it's hard to do that without adopting those same tactics. It's just uh so so I'd say as a con- kind of conclusion, freedom of speech from the government, you know, of course the government can't step in and uh, mandate or or fire someone based on you know a a PR scandal and something the stupid they said online. Uh, that's not the government's job to step in and do that. But I guess it's not the jo- the government's job either to prevent that from happening with private companies. And so frustratingly, that's how it has to be. And we would just have to try and prevent those horrendous life altering, you know, job ending consequences for someone's free speech with just trying to promote that in the culture instead. Cause I don't think you can go to the government and have them force that on. That's just, it's, that's becoming tyrannical too. And, and that's what we're trying to avoid. So it's kind of, it's a, it's a catch 22, but I think this meme of freedom of speech doesn't mean freedom from consequences is uh, is a detriment to that that goal of trying to make these big job ending consequences seem l- ridiculous because they are you know like the currently the court of public opinion finds mm-hmm. them uh, very useful but <laughs> we're trying to make it not so useful and they're justifying their use of those kind of tactics with this phrase so that's why i have so much umbrage with the phrase it's because it's used as a defense for these uh, awful immoral tactics that are being used so that's why i am i am against the phrase but in practice yeah i guess <laughs> i guess that's true <laughs> does that make sense no, I completely understand. I wish it was. I, I I don't think it's possible, and I think it's necessary that we be able to hold. If if the government can't hold people accountable for saying stupid shit, we should be allowed to hold them accountable as long as we are not infringing mm-hmm. on their rights. But I also don't think that inconsequential comments should affect people's life forever such as not agreeing with the right yeah, and especially thing. forever if like you want to support it like for me it's like if you want to walk around with a nazi flag um i support your right to do it but i also support the right of everyone to ignore you and for your life to be shut and for you mm-hmm. to be shunned but i 100 percent believe you have the right to walk around with the flag <laughs> I just have the right to ignore you and call yeah, you an idiot. And and your employer has the right to fire you. <laughs> for me, for me that's Yeah. I I that's yeah. just how I feel. Like I feel like it's sadly necessary cuz I, I think shame to a certain extent does do a certain amount of job uh do a certain amount of work, but like you said, pe- the people who aren't the government with authority need to start recognizing the difference between just dumb little accusations and people trying to throw a huge hissy fit where there is no problem and actual problems. Hey, at least we're not to the point where uh, people are getting arrested for teaching their pug to do a Nazi salute. I mean, we're, we're still America. <laughs> <laughs> we still have that. Yeah. Uh, so thank goodness for that. But I guess our freedom of sp- our, our first amendment means that we get to tell you that your yep. sucks dicks. <laughs> 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 so anyways i think that's a, a good place to call it i think we came to a, a conclusion had some Agreed. some choice words but not for each other thankfully <laughs> we're able to keep this all uh deep and and meaningful discussion without getting into crazy uh ad hominem name calling shenanigans so uh, if we can continue on that, that would be yeah. fantastic. And hopefully we'll, we'll be able to do that. But I, I think I do see a theme from our first episode I, to this one about, you know, talking about uh, how stupid people in the culture are today and uh, how just, you know, cause in the first one we were talking about like fake news and stuff. And now we're talking about this, you know, people being outraged over nothing and, you know, it, it all comes back to 
just trying to be smart in your own uh, way and and look into the details don't take people's word for it do your own research and i think if if everyone was able to and i, I know this is this is a ridiculous uh thing to to ask <laughs> anyone to do but if everyone was able to uh just slow down and think about the their beliefs and examine them just to apply a little bit of critical thinking and a little bit of research i i think we could you know i don't think people's uh, opinions would change all that much. We'd still be divided like right down the middle between uh, conservative and uh, liberal. But I think that we'd be able to actually talk about it. That's, that's what the, the big issue is. So uh, if, if I could just, you know, suggest anything to our viewers is just to our listeners, just examine your, your own, uh, thoughts and your uh your own beliefs and try to develop them and and challenge them and if you come away with the same opinion then it was a it was a good start in the first place and you've you've done your research now you're stronger in that opinion but if you come away with something different and a new take on it now you now you know even better and you know what it's like to have thought the previous thing before so you can you're better equipped to talk to people with that same uh preconceived notion that you had so it's like it just it's just a win 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 overall it's just doing more research about your opinions but that's all i have to say about that <laughs> i think that's a good note to leave on just try to be more thoughtful don't discount other people just because they think something differently mm-hmm. At the end of the day, people thinking differently than you is the reason you aren't in an echo chamber. And I think I said it in the previous episode, you kind of need people around you who are going to try to challenge your opinions if you're ever going to actually have real growth. Yeah, so if anything... Because otherwise, you'll just think that if you think your shit never <laughs> smells because no one ever told mm-hmm. you so, then you're when you find out you're wrong, you're just not going to believe it. Yeah. So if anything, like fill your life with, with people that have differing viewpoints. If you're a Democrat, befriend some Republicans and, and talk to them about it and, and identify like a real person who believes those things that you, uh, you know, before thought were completely ridiculous and, and crazy and only uh, country bumpkins believed, you know, like now, you know, someone who believes it and you can have actual conversations with them that they, and they can challenge your, your preconceived notions. They can challenge that. And then it's just, uh, yeah, you, you don't have to shun them for thinking a different way than you, you know, use that, try to, try to develop your opinions better. You know, you don't, you're not going to, I don't think either you or them are going to change your mind, but you, by the end of that conversation, you will either be questioning and, and need to look up more facts to support your, your opinions or maybe change them. Or you can just, you'll, you'll be able to uh, understand the other side better so that you see them as actual people and not just a mob of, of morons. Cause that's, I feel like that's the biggest problem with our politics is, a lot of people think see the other side as a bumbling pile of buffoons and they can't take them seriously because the 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 beliefs are so different but and i honestly think a lot of our beliefs aren't as different as we think a lot yeah. of times i find a lot of times when i talk with people who our fundamental beliefs are pretty much the same i'm pretty in the middle when it comes to my opinions and political views but like what I've noticed though, is I agree. Like a lot of times, like, you know, I feel like the people I talk to generalize the other side pretty hard and I'm pretty quick to be like, well, does everyone believe this or did one mm-hmm. stupid person say it? The sadly, we, we only move at the speed of our slowest yeah. person. And that goes for everyone's groups and sides. So I, I feel like, you'll be happier and you'll just like, I don't know, you won't walk around with as much hate if you're just willing to as much anger and contempt for another group of people that ultimately you need to share the same air with. Definitely. You know, don't get riled up against each other. Just there's nothing wrong with someone thinking differently than you. I'm not a big fan of country, (laughs) but 
I got I got to sh- I got to share this. I got to share the US with people who are fans of it. And I've accepted yeah. that and it's fine. It is what it is. Rock and roll all day long for me, but you know, I'm a fucking hippie, so what do <laughs> <Jeez>. I know? <laughs> So on that All note, right. <laughs> yeah, thank you for uh, lending us your ears. You may have them back now. Uh, for future reference, I am putting these on uh, youtubecom slash nothing specialty, or at least I think it, it's the nothing, it's nothing specialty YouTube channel, whatever the URL is. Uh, but it's on Sounder as well. That's where the RSS feed is. Uh, the links will be in the description. And uh, it is currently under review for Google Podcasts and Apple, so hopefully that's going to happen. And we'll be able to provide this to everyone in the most convenient way possible. So, moving forward, that's the, that's the spiel. Go and uh, follow those, subscribe to the feeds if you want updates. And uh, hopefully we will see you next time. Yeah, have a good week, guys. We appreciate you listening. <laughs>